Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to give you a overview about the ongoing uh, revision of the Eurocode 5, the fire design of timber structure. Uh, just uh, a disclaimer, uh, because the revision is not completed, I hope that you will not immediately use this slide for designing the structure because maybe there will be some changes. But of course, I think it's important that you see already what uh, have been done until uh, today. Uh, the revision of all your code uh, is done uh, by project team and for the five part of Eurocode 5, uh, a team of five people have been selected. You see, Juni, Akka, Reininen, Alarius, Jochen, Schmid, Norman Wert, and myself. We received this task to prepare the new Eurocode 5 design of timber structure. Um, we cannot do exactly what we want. We don't have 100% freedom. We have to follow a, a mandate, a contract, and uh, already before we started the work, we uh, discuss in working group four of SCFI what uh, should be the content of the revision of the current Eurocode, based also on the principle for all revision of all Eurocode. And of course, we want to try to simplify. We should avoid to give uh, uh, more than one model to design uh, a structure. We want to harmonize the current Eurocode of many annexes, which are informative. They should be now moved to the main part and they make them normative. And of course, we receive the task to improve, to extend the current Eurocode 5. Uh, we started the work uh, uh, three years ago in June uh, 2018, and we have, uh, during the last three years, uh, provided already three drafts. You see some number about this revision process. Uh, in May 2019, the first draft, the second draft was uh, May 2020, last year in October also the first draft. And now we are preparing the final version, which is uh, due on the end of April, beginning of May. Um, you can see we will have a, a new Eurocode with about 150 page, 100 page the main part, about 50 page annexes. And of course, uh, the revision process uh, should fulfill uh, send rules so or you, you submit the draft, the national standardization body can comment, we get the comment, we try to improve. Uh, the next draft, and you see that uh, we uh, got more than 600 comments uh, in the second for the second draft, and uh, for the draft draft uh, a little less. And we will see now then for the final draft, just to give you a feeling about the process. Um, the revision is done based on the principle. These principles are valid for all Eurocode revisions, so we should try to include the current state of the art, which does not mean state of research. We should try to follow the principle of ease of use, to avoid parallel design method, and to try to have a harmonization similar style between different Eurocode. The motto of this revision is evolution, not a revolution. And um, the main highlights for this revision, and then you will see later on uh, in more detail the content, uh, we are able to extend the validity of design model up to 90, uh, sometimes up to two hours fire resistant. We include a new rule for CLT. We improve uh, the design model for timber frame assembly. Uh, we include a new model for eye joist. We improve the design rule for connection. We improve the separating function method. We give uh, more uh, detailing rules and we uh, revise also the design for a timber structure exposed to physically based uh, design fire. Actually, we are, we are going a little beyond our mandate, but uh, it's a unique opportunity to try to evolve the new Eurocode in, uh, in the best way. This is the table of content. 
Uh, the first uh, four chapter is uh, similar to all Eurocode uh, related to the file design, meaning this more or less the same for concrete, for steel, for composite, for uh, timber. And then uh, you have, of course, the chapter dedicated to the material, material property. You get all information about charring model, simplify design method. You have really the calculation model to do the design for all typical timber structure. Detailing already mentioned, important to follow also detailing rule. And you see there is also a new chapter dedicated to timber structure exposed to physically based design file. You can say actually the first 10 chapter is more designed based on ISO standard file exposure and the last chapter design based on physically based design file. Um, very nice is that we have the similar structure for all Eurocode for the fire design, meaning that you have three level of uh, design strategy. You can just use uh, so-called tabulated design data, nothing to calculate, just to check if you fulfill some requirement given in, in table, or you do really some simple calculation, but you have also the opportunity to, to go for more advanced design method. So you have really free strategy and you will choose the right strategy for your design. We have, you, you have seen about 50 pages of annexes. I will come back later on. So we uh, add the new annexes which are needed to really use the, the main part uh, in the best way. I will come back later on about uh, this. Uh, we have a lot of coordination. You can imagine uh, uh, there are interaction with other uh, uh, technical committee. Here you can uh, give a look later on. I will provide the slide. We have a lot of interaction with the so-called horizontal, horizontal group file to get the good harmonization between the materia, but also with other technical committee, 193, 127, just to have a good uh, coordination, good harmonization also between product standard, testing standard, and the uh, Eurocode file, which is used for the design of the infrastructure. Now going to the content, I will try to give you chapter by chapter some highlights of the current revision. You see here, this is the calculation of the uh, design value for uh, material property. This equation is valid for all material. You always start from characteristic value. You have a modification to consider the influence of temperature. Um, and this safety factor is for all material equal to one for the fire situation. And here there is a special factor that we have only in timber design. It's a modification factor which allow us to go from 5% to 20% fractile value. Uh, this is the current Eurocode. Uh, this is the new one actually is, is more or less remaining the same. Also these values are remaining the same. No big changes. The good news is that uh, we finish also a research project. So now we have done a reliability um, calibration of the design model. So we can uh, justify also this factor in a, in a very a scientific sound way. Um, this factor is, is when you want to consider the influence of temperature of mechanical properties. So you use this kind of diagram where you see that uh, by increasing the temperature, the strength property are decreasing and the reduction is not the same. It's as a function of the action. If you have comprehension, tension and shear, but usually you don't use these, you use for advanced design model, usually for the effective cross-section method, you can say this is equal to one because we introduced the so-called zero strength layer. This is what I mentioned here, uh, is just to make the calculation very simple. We use the effective cross-section method. We add this zero strength layer to the jar in depth. And in this way, we can use k theta equal to one. And as already mentioned, the safety factor is for all material equal to one. Then uh, sometimes we just add few sentences and just to make uh, clear that when you calculate 
a fire resistant according to Eurocode phi, this is equivalent to do a test and maybe you get 60 minus fire resistance. So you will find in the Eurocode uh, uh, this kind of sentence and it's because sometimes authority do not understand that if I design a structure according to Eurocode 5, I don't have to do the, the, the fire test because it's designed and it's proven that I would reach this fire resistance. Chairing is the most important thing, of course, for timber as combustible material. So you have to calculate first the charring depth uh, using a notional charring rate and, of course, the time of fire exposure. We really invest a lot of time to, pre to really be precise with the definition, with the wording. So that is clear what we mean uh, with the uh, charring model that we have now in the Eurocode 5. We also give a name to this, uh, we call European Chari model, so that it's clear that it's, it's, it's embedded in Eurocode 5. We want to avoid that you start taking maybe one parameter from one code, another parameter from another code, mixing code may be dangerous because then you are not sure if everything is good uh, coordinated. Um, for uh, ISO standard fire exposure, we have really this uh, simple model with cost and charry rate, but the charry rate is different for different charring phases. So what we don't have anymore uh, with regard to, in comparison to the current version, this corner rounding is not anymore needed. We have the effective cross-section, so we, this would be maybe interesting for advanced design method. Uh, we try to give a really a systematic uh, um, uh, explanation of the factor that influence charring. So you have uh, this kind of table because you start from the basic charring rate and then you have some uh, influence factor which modify the basic charring rate and to get the notional charring rate. And I think it's nice to have one table showing the meaning showing also the reference where you get and you don't have parameters spread all over the 150 page. We try really to condensate everything in chapter five. Then of course you need the basic design charry rate. This is more or less the same what we have currently with again precise a little. Uh, you have about this typical charry rate of 0.65 for softwood, for hardwood sometimes you can go with a lower value. We give also now a value for panels in a more systematic way. So I always try to show you the current version, the new version, so we don't need any more this column, notional charry rate, because now we have this equation with the different parameter. So in the new Eurocode, you will get the table with the basic design charry rate, and then you pick up the different influence factor. Maybe you are scary so many factor, but in the reality, in most of the cases, these factors are one, and then you go back to very simple equation. You always have to distinguish one dimensional sharing, or maybe you have more dimensional sharing, two, three, two side, three side, and so on. And um, then you will recognize that at the end, also with the new Eurocode, you do the same as you have done with the current Eurocode. If you have linear member for solid timber for glulam, you will calculate with a notional channel rate 0 0.8, 0 0.7. For glulam, for plain uh, timber member, you will uh, have uh, the possibility to use the 0 0.65, the one-dimensional charring. So, at the end, there are no changes with regard to the uh, notional charry rate for the typical member. Um, we have to consider different charring phases. This is already in the current version. Also in the, with this regard, uh, we really try to be precise in the definition of the different charring phase to explain exactly what we mean. Uh, but uh, more or less, uh, this concept has been already established in the current version. And this is, as uh, you can see here on these slides, uh, for initially protected uh, member, you have a constant uh, charring. 
And if you protect, you have to consider different phases because uh, until you have the protection, you have a, an encapsulate phase, then the, the members start the charring, but uh, the protection is still in place. So we have the so-called protected charring phase two. Then there is the fall off of the protection uh, when the timber really start burning faster. So we have the so-called post-protecting charring phase three with higher charring rate. And then when you have enough charring depth, a form, usually in this range of 25 millimeter, you go back to the consolidated charring phase. So um, you have a constant charring rate. However, this is uh, different for the different charring phase. But I think this is already really uh, in the current version. We really try to, you know, also to with all this symbol and to, to really be precise so there is no confusion when you are using the different charring phase. We assume uh, so-called bone line integrity, uh, meaning that the charcoal does not fall off, but we know that there are cases when there is a falling off of charring layer. And for this reason, we give also the model considering when the bone line integrity is non-maintained, which is the model is very similar as the previous model you have more or less the same phase for each layer. So this is the first layer, maybe it's protected. There is the phase two, then there is the falling off, then the higher charring rate, the consolidated. And then here you have the fall off of the first layer and then you do the same idea for the second layer from the third layer. So it is very simple to understand you are applying the same model, uh, the same model, however, for the single layer. How do you uh, for calculate this uh, phase two? So when we have actually a reduced Charlie rate, we give also this kind of table so that you can calculate the factor K2 as a function of the panel that you have applied to your timber member. It's just a function of the thickness of the panel. So it's easy to get also the factor two and you can consider this uh, phase two in an easy way. The phase three, when the falling off of the protection layer as so cure is very also simple to calculate. And most engineers, they, they know this number. We have a double charry rate for the phase three and then the consolidated phase, we, we, we are going back to the normal charring rate. Um, to calculate the so-called start time of charring, now we have a very good uh, um, uh, combination. We take the, this uh, factor, uh, this, uh, this time uh, of uh, start of charring uh, from the model that we use for the separating function method. So there is now two models in the Eurocode for the separating function method for load bearing effective cross section. And you can really, we, we are able really to connect the model in a good way that you get actually the start time of charring using the separating function method. Um, and we have now for all material really systematic, uh, this uh, equation in the current Eurocode, you have more empirical um, I, equation. Now I think we have a very good systematic um, evaluation and we can give for all material the start time of chairing. The failure time of the protection, meaning when the um, protection uh, fall off, it depends on the degradation of the material, but we can have also an encourage failure. And uh, we try now to do in a way that if you fulfill the detailing that we give in chapter uh, nine, you don't have to check this anymore. It's already fulfilled automatic. And, uh, and for this, uh, the, F, uh, uh, the failure time for the degradation, we are able, this is the first time in the new revision, we are able to provide again, very simple equation so that you can estimate the failure time of uh, panel gypsum plasterboard, gypsum firewall board. So I think this is a very huge improvement, generic value, which are based on a huge database that uh, we have established. 
during the last year and we are able to provide. So that the engineer, they can start doing a first design, they don't have to know exactly which panel they will use for the project. Also for calculating the consolidation time, there is a simple equation so that you know also when you go from phase two to phase three. Um, for the simplified design method, this was uh, the basic of Charlene chapter five, then you go for the seven simplified design method. Here we have really the effective cross-section method and the separated function method. Effective cross-section cross method is, uh, is well known, is remaining, is, is the only model that we give now in the new Eurocode. You calculate your char in depth, you add your zero strength layer, and you get your effective cross-section. And with the effective cross-section, you do the design as you would do at normal temperature. temperature but with an effective cross-section and not with the initial cross-section. There is no more uh, the so-called reduced property method. This is uh, deleted. Uh, we want to avoid this parallel model in the, in the Eurocode in the future. I have already mentioned you have the initial cross-section. First, you calculate the char in depth. You add the zero strength layer, then you get your effective cross section. For one dimensional, for more dimensional, it's a simple calculation already done in the last year. Uh, the zero strength layer, you can also consider that is the building up during time. You don't have to uh, apply the full value from the beginning. Some, in some cases, you need also this figure. And then uh, if we go to the linear timber member, it's very simple to design a beam. Uh, if it's initially uh, unprotected, you have this phase one constant charging rate. And if it's protected, depending on the protection, maybe you go through phase two, then three, and then four. You have this equation uh, with the factor that I showed you previously. You see that equation, which at the beginning are very long, at the end they are very short. You need only the basic charging rate, this factor um, convert uh, to the national charging rate, and then you have the factor two for phase three, otherwise for phase four is the normal is equal to phase one, and here you have the factor K2 for the protected phase. Um, zero strength layer, we have in the current version seven millimeter uh, during the, the last 10 year. Uh, we were able to study this and uh, we recognize that actually the seven millimeter is non-conservative, it's not really on the safe side. And uh, we will adjust this value in the new Eurocode. We will give actually a factor two, 40 millimeter zero strength layer that you can use every time. But when you have member subjected to tension and bending, you can go with a lower value of, of 10 millimeter. And, and we have a really a very good uh, calibration now um, of the new model. For plain timber member, meaning for example, CLT and so on, um, you have um, again for initially protected uh, one uh, constant charge rate and for the initially protected the different phases. Also here equation which are pretty simple. And then you have to distinguish uh, bond line integrity or uh, maintain or non maintain. If maintained, you have one phase. If not maintained, as I already mentioned, you have uh, what uh, have been already presented in the last year the so called state model that you have. Uh, you go to design uh, for, you do the design layer by layer the first layer and then the second layer burn a little faster, then you have the consolidated phase and the next layer again. Now the question is how can you pick up uh, this model or this model? You have to know if the ball line integrity is maintained, yes or no. And for this, we added a, a Annex P which give you uh, the possibility to know which model you have to pick up. And the same here, for a protected uh, uh, plane member. With regard to zero strain layer for plane member, 
uh, we give a simple equation, usually it's a function of the thickness of the member. You have to think about if you have the tension side uh, on the fire side or not. And you can calculate your zero strength layer. This is the table for solid wood, glulam, LVL. And we have similar table for CFT. So you see the range of the zero strength layer is between seven millimeter up to 60 millimeter as a function, where is the charring depth and so on. This is the table for the floors and we have now provided also a table for walls. We are always trying to simplify the, the, this calculation as much as possible, but we want also to be not too conservative. Timber frame assembly improve model. Uh, you see here on this systematic that actually with the future Euro code, you can design timber frame assembly with white cavity, with partially filled cavity, with full filled cavity. Maybe you have the insulation only close to the member. All these typical cases can be designed with the new Euro code and you can have any kind of insulation. So we can use from stone wool to PUR, but we consider the performance of the insulation with the so-called protection level, PL1 to 3. So there is an annex, you can uh, do test, you get a, a, a performance, a classification, but we give also this table so we know stone wool is uh, PL1 and so on. So actually you, you can, depending on the insulation, you know which model you have to use. For PL1, you have uh, uh, this kind of model where we have charring only on, from one side but we have the zero strength layer on free side. And then we give, of course, also for timber frame assembly, the zero strength layer. These values are still under optimization. So we really try for all situation to optimize, to improve the model. And for the other case, void cavity, PL2, PL3, the difference is that you have charring also from the side. So we have the so-called lateral charring and charring from, from be, below. And then you have just to know when this charring from the side start. So this is the charring from below. And then there will be a moment where the charring start also from the side. Now for a void cavity, of course, this will be the moment when the protection fall off, then you have the beam burning and then for PL2 start a little later and for PL1 start a little early. But with this graph, I think it's very easy to understand the model. We give the equation and you can calculate step by step and design start the joist in your timber frame assembly. Sometimes you have also to consider uh, load bearing uh, panels and here you just use the normal effective cross section here you can use also the seven millimeter zero strength layer for this kind of calculation. Separating function method, which is uh, at the moment uh, in an annex informative a black box. Now we are able to provide really uh, an improved model is going back to a thesis which have been performance ATR many years ago. The model has been now used for the last 10 years and uh, I, I think that it's very good that we have now this good model in the new Europe code. You calculate the protection time based on a basic protection time, some coefficient that we have to introduce to consider the position. Everything is defined in a systematic way. You have all equation to calculate uh, and to verify the separating function. This is, I think, uh, an amazing uh, improvement. You can calculate any kind of floors and walls you don't have to do uh, for each uh, configuration a test. We also improve the delta T, meaning that we have now a very good connection. Uh, we can explain what is the physical um, meaning of this delta T, uh, which is uh, uh, the positive effect of, uh, of panel, which do not fall off. 
when we reach the start of charring, but they fall off a little later. And then we can calculate also uh, the additional protection that receive the next layer. And we have the different equation in the new version. And the good thing is that uh, we can really cover more or less of typical material. Also cellulose and wood fibers are now included in the new Euro code, also clay plaster. Of course, you will always find maybe a material which is not included, but for this, we give also an annex in order to get the value also for new material, which will be developed in the future. And uh, honestly, the model is, uh, is at the moment conservative. We, uh, but this, I think, is also good to be a little conservative because you can really do any kind of uh, calculation for walls and floor. But we are also trying to improve detailing. If you look at the current version, you have only two pages, and we are really now trying to improve because it's very important. So we give really rules for different important topic uh, because we know that detailing is for timber structure very important. So of course we give also some information that is important to check the resistance of your member, but it's also important to look at the support uh, because also in the support area, the load should be transferred from beam to, to another beam and so on. We give also this kind of table showing what are the minimal uh, perimeter spacing between fastener that you, that you have to fulfill because we have this calculation method that I show you and uh, we assume that you are, however, taking care about this minimal requirement with regard to detailing. Also, we give some information about uh, what happened to, to the joints, to the fixing, uh, when you have to, um, to consider this uh, joint, uh, and how you have to consider the joint. So we are really trying to give some advice for engineers also with regard to detailing. Connection, uh, by connection, we have also improvement. Uh, the most important thing is that we extend the current calculation, which are limited to 60 million to up to two hours. And what we give, we give a very simple table to design connection, especially the typical connection with slot in steel plate and steel dowel, we give uh, for typical connection this kind of table. You don't have to calculate, you just check uh, that you have the right dimension, that the T1 here, this timber cover, it's uh, enough. Um, you see for a half hour, you need 50 millimeter, for one hour, 80 millimeter. Also, we check that you, uh, we have enough edge and end distance from the dowel uh, to, the, to, the, to the edge. And with this kind of table, we are able to design the element in an easy way. But of course, you can also calculate. We have the so-called exponential reduction method. We have improved. We have extended up to two hours, especially for dowels. And oh, sorry, dowels and bolts. Eh? Sorry, they should be dowels and bolts. You use this equation for the screw. You use this equation. Are two similar model, and uh, we can really calculate the fire resistance. Uh, if you need, for example, more, you can always go for a, a protection. Sometimes, really, you have to increase the dimension. You will find all this information. Uh, you will find also some information for connection with external steel plates, for connection with axial loaded fastener, and we have now included also some information for the carpentry connection. Um, this was the main part about the annexes. Uh, we have many annexes. Why we need so many? Because we need some new test method, because we need something about the bone line integrity, and something about also determination of the basic design charlie rate. Uh, sometimes you have to assess this protection level. Um, we give also the possibility to assess the failure time of protection system based on all data, uh, how to get the value for new material for the separating function method. I joist will be later on by Alarius presented. 
And you see, most of the annexes are informative, but we still have some annexes which are normative, so which are really state of, of the art, but we place on the annex because, for example, high joys maybe in Switzerland we are not so using so much, but this is an important model will be presented by Ara later on. We include also really a good improvement when you have to design timber exposed to physically based design. We have a new model, uh, the timber child and its storage model, which allow us to understand actually what happened in the fire situation. You have timber, but you have also char layer, which is a very important element in the fire situation. And we can now calculate the contribution of timber to the fire load. And uh, we are able also now to design a timber uh, structure exposed to physically based design fire. Um, the concept is the same effective cross-section method. But of course, now you don't have the ISO standard fire exposure. You have the real fire. The zero strength layer is not 10 millimeter. You see it may be vary between 10 and 20 with a factor which vary between one and two. You have to consider what happened in the cooling phase. And of course, it's a little more complicated, but it's good that we also provide this new law knowledge in the new Euro code. And the Annex B is very important, is the assessment of the bone line integrity because we give to model and you have to know which model you pick up. And the, uh, the uh, test method is very simple. You have a, a timber element exposed to one dimensional charring. And during the test, you actually measure the mass loss. It, it's enough if you measure at the end of the test. So based on the mass loss for the test, after the test, you are able then to see, okay, maintain, non-maintain, and in this way, you can choose the right model. Um, summarize, I, I think that uh, the new Euro code uh, will give you really uh, a more uh, possibility to design timber structure, and we think in a more accurate way. Uh, we improve the European charring model, we improve the effective cross-section method, we improve the rule for connection, we revise the rule for detailing, and we give a new model for designing timber structure exposed to physical based design fire. We tried really to have a good evolution, not a revolution. We tried to get the highest consensus, really talking to all stakeholders, to industry, to engineers, because the Euro code is for the practice but also for the future. We want to include the state of the art so that we can design also this kind of tall buildings in the future with timber. Thank you very much for your attention.